All right, stand by, and here we go. Video now up and going, and we are set. Uh, good Monday morning, everybody. It is 11.30 Eastern time. We're on a little bit earlier this time around. Chip Chapman is taking a couple of days off for some procedural stuff, and I am filling in for the morning. Meteorologist Todd Hyslip will be here coming up later on at the end of the afternoon and evening shift, so giving you weather overtime a little bit on the earlier side today. For those of you who have never tuned into this before or are not usually up about the same time that uh, we do this show at about 9.30 in the evenings. This is our live video weather blog for you to be able to ask questions and see what else is going on uh, when it comes to weather. We'll bring you a decent few amounts of topics, some concerning the area, some a little bit farther afield, but we'll give you an idea as to, again, what is happening out there uh, when it comes to weather in the next few days. Thanks to Canada, we've got, again, a decent amount of smoke blurring its way on through, and that took the air quality for a tumble last night. There's really not much of anything in the way of clear skies on the way for now but as we go into the next several days we'll see not only some heat and humidity but also the possibility of again getting some of that haze out there there's also a very small chance of a repeat performance for more smoke not immediately but it will be a potential problem for us uh, as we go throughout the course of the next several days and weeks, depending on uh, how the flow goes out there. But for right now, much of what we're looking at with this haze is going to be sticking around for a little bit. So don't get too used to anything involving uh, clearer skies as we see, again, that potential for uh, more haziness continues across much of the area and over the next couple of days. We'll also have an update if I can get this taken care of. Apologies for doing this on the fly. was trying to get this uh, taken care of earlier. Calvin is now a tropical storm and could be brushing by the Hawaiian Islands. So a bit of a concern there as we look into the future. We'll talk about that coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Let's get started with our weather window picture of the day from one of our own News 12's Emily Casulo. A uh, nice view from the Smith Perry Berries area in Ottawa. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Emily, for a nice view of the sunflowers and being from Kansas. Kind of nice to be able to see those uh, out and about. If you've got pictures, again, please send them to us at pictures at WDEF.com. Or, again, you can drop them to the uh, comments section of our regular uh, it's social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram would be glad to be able to see uh, what you're seeing out there. Heading out to catch a fish today, according to the website, we're looking at excellent conditions, although it is going to be hazy and it is going to be hot. There's not going to be too much of anything involving uh, anything in the way of very cool weather coming up or very clear weather, thanks in part again to all that haze across much of the area. Almanac page for the day yesterday, we did manage to wind up right about spot on on temperatures. We've managed again to get, uh, and this is a concern here to where, okay, the computer keeps taking us back for some reason to about 24 hours ago, but our record high for yesterday, nowhere close to that. We're behind for the month and the year on rainfall, uh, could use a little bit more there, and obviously not seeing anything in the way of help uh, from that anytime soon. We did have some patchy areas of haze and fog across the area earlier today, and visibility has improved a little bit, but we are still seeing some lower visibilities at times, and probably will continue to see that what's left of the smoke sticking around the area is again still here it's just not quite as thick as it used to be and it's brushing up against the mountainside so it's not moving as fast to the east and some of that area is coming its way down the other side of the Appalachians so the smoke is still going to be sticking around for a while and we will continue to see the potential for that around the area. We've got some drier, clearer air coming in from Canada. Not going to be seeing a lot of help out of that, and we'll explain why coming up here uh, in just a little bit. From the News 12 studios and looking back to the northwest, where ordinarily we would be able to see uh, the hills and the mountain peaks off in the distance. We can barely even see to the ones across the river at this time. And the northern flank of Lookout Mountain is looking uh, pretty well on the hazy dim side for right now. Likewise, the view from 2475 traffic on the northbound leg heading toward westbound 24 
Uh, it's moving slowly and can't even see Signal Mountain off in the distance. That's how thick some of that smoke is. Looking back to where we ordinarily would have seen sunrise on the downtown camera, again, that's haze. That's not overcast skies or clouds. That's the haze and that smoke that we've been seeing uh, across much of the area. Out toward Lee Point's and this also, we turn the camera around to look towards sunrise, looking to the east on Highway 64, and again, barely able to see anything off in the distance, uh, continuing again to get some very uh, dim conditions out there, very gray, very hazy. And from the Island Cove Marina and Resort camera, visibility has improved a little bit. We can see on over to the far side of the waters, but again, it is not showing anything in the way of clear blue skies. It's more of a battleship gray out there. And temperatures have risen pretty well. The icon that you see there, that's that's accurate. That's, again, for right now, uh, we're not seeing anything in the way of cloud cover. So it is clear, technically. It's just hazy out across the area. So we are getting sunshine and we are getting clear skies for the most part. It's just very hazy. Humidity's way up there and we've got calm winds, so they're not doing anything to help us out in cooling off anytime soon. So we are seeing, again, less in the way of help from that. And temperatures across much of the area, we've been seeing uh, numbers primarily in the lower 80s now, mid to upper 70s in some of the higher elevations across portions of the area, but not seeing else in the way of cooler weather on anytime soon. And we also should see uh, some very toasty, very toasty conditions in the next couple of days. Almanac page for the air quality index, and I just updated this before we got on the air. We're seeing uh, an air quality index of 111 that's code orange and has been since at least 3 o'clock this morning, upwards of about 114, 115. The forecast was originally calling for 101, just over into code orange, and the forecast for Tuesday is a more moderate yellow, but just barely on the numbers. So for the next couple of days, this haze looks to be sticking around and continuing again to see the potential for a lot more of that haze for now. And if the winds are right and the smoke output is right we may see this all over again in a week or a month it just kind of all depends so for right now this is the way it is looking and it's not looking great unfortunately uh, for much of the area we do have a couple of fronts stuck across the area and one more trying to make its way across i-70 that again stirring up some showers and thunderstorms around st louis back toward uh, some very impressive storms last night back around kansas this is trying to make its way down to the south but then we've got high pressure across the gulf which is going to take all this and shove it back to the north as a warm front so for right now we're just not seeing anything in the way of cooler weather coming on through. And thanks to this area of high pressure returning us to that southerly, southwesterly flow, that's not going to do us any favors on, excuse me, the temperatures either as we go into the rest of the day. Now for today, again, through about this afternoon, lower 90s, that's pretty inevitable. Enough sunshine in between all that haze could be a bit of an issue. Uh, some showers and thunderstorms could try to develop back to the north and west of us and then make their way into the area, uh, mainly right about midnight or so. But the trouble is those storms are moving into a lot calmer air and a lot drier air, so to speak. So a lot of what this is is not going to be anymore once it gets all the way through here. Now we could see, again, a little bit of an impulse of energy making its way on through. So that is a potential uh, stirrer up of showers and thunderstorms taking place, but not seeing a lot of activity there. Into tomorrow morning, uh, we're going again for low temperatures, maybe back around 69, 70 degrees. And then tomorrow afternoon, very much on the hot side. Enough sunshine, haze, and heat to get us into the lower to mid-90s. Some isolated speckles of showers and thunderstorms possible. And then as we get into around Tuesday night late, the, uh, the models from earlier were taking this and putting it more north of us and moving it through about midnight. So the current computer model scan has pushed these storms back off to the west of us and further to the south. So as they move through late Tuesday into early Wednesday, it looks like they're going to be dissipating right about the time that they hit the area. So we may see some showers and thunderstorms overnight, possibly sticking around, but doesn't look like a huge amount 
uh, coming on through, so not much left over there. And low temperatures by early 6 o'clock Wednesday, lower 70s. Now, that next round of showers and thunderstorms has been pushed back by a bit, so by mid mid to late morning Wednesday if this holds together and this is a pretty mighty if at this point looks like we might get some more showers and thunderstorms through here that will do more for clearing out the air it'll also do a very good job of raising our humidity rates so we'll see some pretty sultry conditions uh, numbers may cool off for a little bit lower to mid 70s as the system moves through if we get enough warm temperatures uh, this computer model says we're only making the mid possibly the upper 80s around Huntsville. I think we're probably going to go a little hotter than that if we get enough sunshine. So we'll see where that winds up. And then for early Thursday morning, uh, briefly into the lower 70s, and also another round of showers and thunderstorms developing, looks like over to the east of us. So that, again, will give us the potential of what we're seeing in the way of more rainfall. That'll help, but it's not going to be enough, I think, really to give us uh, the burst that we need to get back to normal for the year and the month and probably is going to add to some more fog problems out there as well. But for right now, that's about the best that we can get at this time. Maximum temperatures over the next several days, that heat dome out west uh, continues to make its way uh, into the area. So we may see the potential of numbers again trying to make their way up. But by the time we get into around later during next week and the later portions of July, it's going to be hot. Temperatures near close to normal, but it looks like again at this time that much of what we're getting into is going to be uh, less in the way of record heat and plenty in the way of just plain heat for the area. And that's going to be bad enough as it is. So what we're looking at is going to be that haze sticking around for today and tomorrow and then through the middle part of the week that's where we get into the numbers uh, mid 90s or so we've got to get at least triple digits before we see any record highs taking place that's just not happening for right now now after that as we see an increase in showers and thunderstorms starting off on wednesday maximum uh, friday and saturday and then starting to finally kind of drop down a bit by the time we get into saturday and sunday that's where we see the potential of some numbers back into the mid to upper 80s and that again could be a bit of an issue uh, again, hopefully for outdoor activities, at least with the thunderstorms. So keep an eye on the lightning out there for anything going on in the way of uh, football practice, getting close to two-a-day season, marching band practice going on, anything outdoors. If you've got any plans for anything happening, uh, you're definitely going to have to keep that in mind. The heat and humidity uh, out there, even with numbers like this, if you're outdoors for long periods of time and you push yourself too hard, especially when the humidity is like 60%, 70%, you've got to take care you've got to be able to watch what's going on with your own body you've got to be able to keep an eye on anybody else suffering from heat stress injuries that's going to be important to make certain that you keep an eye on what's going on out there so again keep an eye for that and find out more about that about heat injuries by going to our website we've got plenty of information available on that so stay tuned again for more out there from the latest update from the perseverance rover uh, trying to cool you off a little bit we feature some of these little vignettes on air every once in a while under the guise of if you're really hot maybe this will help cool you off the latest report and they come in fairly sporadic from the, per the perseverance rover the high temperature on the latest weather report from mars looking back toward jezero crater a high of minus 12 fahrenheit that was the maximum number out there and a low temperature of 105 degrees below zero so a little cooler there in some locations uh, more information about what's going on with the mission and the perseverance weather report which again comes in every couple of days and that only when the rover is active when it's not frozen over in winter time pretty much uh, these are actually some decent summer-like autumn-like temperatures for mars believe it or not so that might help cool you off a little bit and let's do one more here that I just put together this morning. Uh, the lights of a Munson Scott South Pole Station from the National Science Foundation in Antarctica, seeing the lights, uh, the stars popping out above the South Pole and a guidance laser being fired into the atmosphere, according to what I've learned from the NSF's website. So really cool to be able to see that. And taking a look, uh, well, for right now, we did have the data coming on through. 
uh, from McMurdo Station at least, a little farther away from the South Pole, but uh, we did have a temperature earlier of about minus 22, and it is winter down there, so again, bit of a chill, but otherwise, condition one, if I'm not mistaken, out there, condition three is like total whiteout blizzard. Uh, condition one is where nothing is going on at this time, and that's about the only uh, three conditions that you have down around Antarctica, so at least trying to cool you off uh, a little bit from what it looks like down there, but that's about as good as it gets. Next couple of days, again, going to be getting on the toasty side, but should not stop you from uh, getting out and getting a free weather radio if you are a resident of Whitfield County, Georgia. The EMA of Whitfield County will be giving away free 200 pre-programmed weather radios and that'll be coming up this Friday from 4 to 7 p.m. at Riverbend Park, 1999 Riverbend Drive. Uh, again, this is a great piece of equipment to have around every home, every business, every school, every place of worship, every, every store, every place that has people in and going through it should have a weather radio programmed and ready to go for severe weather. You can program out the counties you don't want to be alerted for because this antenna picking up the signal from the National Weather Service, it has a numerical encoding system that lists the counties that are under a watch, a warning, and advisory. And if you don't want to be woken up in the middle of the night, if you're in Hamilton County and don't want to be bothered, bothered for uh, anything around Bradley County or Polk County or any other place, you don't have to be bothered for stuff like that. So that, again, for right now, is a really cool thing to have. And Whitfield County EMA is going to be giving away 200 of these weather radios. That's this Friday, 4 to 7 p.m. at Riverbend Park. You have to have a photo ID. You have to be in person to be able to pick it up. And, again, there's only 200 uh, free ones. They gave away 300 a few weeks ago. Now they're giving away 200. So first come, first serve. So get there early enough. Uh, to pick one up. If you missed your chance and want to just go ahead and buy one, it's about 30 bucks with the battery include batteries included on this. And this is battery powered so it can stay on if the power goes off. If you can pick one up, if you haven't done so, if you live outside of Whitfield County, Georgia, pick up a weather radio at your local hardware store, your local grocery store. You'll be able to find out more about that. And again, this is one of the best choices of purchases for a piece of equipment you have ever done in your entire life. So go ahead and pick one up. If by chance you don't know anything about how to program a weather radio, all you have to do is drop by our website, WDEF.com, and we'll be glad to help you program that. We've got a section of our web website dedicated on how to program a weather radio, and it's not as hard as you might think. Uh, Emily Casulo here at News 12 needs help in getting hers taken care of. So one of these days, uh, hoping she's going to bring her weather radio in so we can uh, help program that and get that taken care of. So please pick up a weather radio if you haven't already. If you're in Whitfield County, Georgia, and have photo ID and can get, can get to Riverbend Park uh, this Friday, 4 to 7 p.m., Go ahead and get that, and it's, again, totally free. Such a bargain. Go ahead and pick one up there for you. Uh, coming up in the next few weeks, again, from Barnard Astronomical Society, the July star party was a bust thanks to the weather. The next one coming up will be August the 5th. That's Saturday from 7 to 11 p.m. at Cloudland Canyon, uh, on Cloudland Canyon Park Road, Rising Fawn, Georgia. If you'd like to know more about what this is all about and, again, more about uh, what you can expect from uh, the local astronomical group, they'll have several telescopes available. Hopefully the seeing conditions will be good. So if you'd like to know more about that, head to their Facebook page at facebook.com slash Barnard Astro or go to their main website at barnardastronomy.org to find out more details about what the party's all about and what to look for out there. In the next few weeks, it's not peaking anytime soon, but it will be in a little bit less than a month. The next big thing is going to be the Perseid meteor shower, and it's already started. It's on its way to a buildup, and that'll be about August 11th and 12th, where the moon will be almost just past new. So it's expected that the moon will not be interfering with the meteors. So the peak of it is coming up. It just started, but it should peak around August 11th through 12th. But if you're looking back toward the northeast, 
and you see again you're probably if you're up early in the morning you're probably going to start seeing more shooting stars more meteors out there uh, because we're getting closer as the earth moves into that stream of cosmic debris left over by a comet there'll be more shooting stars more meteors out there for you to take a look at so if you're wondering about that plenty of information available from the american meteor society and plenty of information on other websites of which i've already featured a lot of those uh, on my social media pages so if you'd like to stop by and take a look at that be aware again in the near future that we may be seeing more of that coming up and of course i'll be keeping you updated on other astronomical stuff uh, coming up in the course of the near future so for right now heading into what could be hopefully some good opportunities this meteor shower can give us a rate of 100 meteors per hour which is basically one uh, every minute or so it's not a meteor storm but it is again pretty big one of the bigger showers of the year so hopefully this one will turn out to be a good one we'll be waiting to see what happens with that so stay tuned for more and we'll keep you updated there uh, again we'll have more on the forecast as we go throughout the course of the next few days and weeks i'll be back in for chip chapman he'll be out again tomorrow uh, meteorologist todd highslip will be in for the evening shows monday and tuesday and of course uh, stay tuned for more on our website for more details if you've got a story idea let us know about it if you have any Anything, we get 90% of our story ideas from you. So if you have ideas out there that would be, you think, a good opportunity, please let us know about it. Send it to us through our email, our website. Uh, contact us on social media. Give us an idea as to what exactly you might be looking for uh, in coverage out there. We might not be able to cover it, but we might be able to. So if you can, please drop us a note. Give us an idea as to what's going on. Uh, let our assignment desk know about it as much in advance as possible because like an hour before the event, it's not a good idea idea that we might be able to actually uh, cover it because we've got other things scheduled on there so earlier rather than later and I would be remiss if I don't do uh, one more thing on here and I hope I have it loaded up because if I don't uh, it's going to be difficult to search out but in the meantime uh, please don't forget if you're a teacher uh, make certain that you are uh, here we go make certain that you're able to drop by our website the fall semester is coming up very soon and if you would like to request one of our weather personnel to visit your classroom great no problem but if you wait until september october these slots that we have for our availability fill up very quickly so if you have the opportunity to sign up know a little bit about your schedule ahead of time go to wdef.com weather go to our weather our food city weather in the classroom program and give us a, a idea as to where you are what grade level you teach what topics you'd like us to cover things like that dates and times that might work for you so we can kind of cross connect on our calendar so if you could again please get that request in as soon as you can because in a couple of weeks those requests are going to start coming in and it's going to be very difficult to schedule anything for the rest of the year until after the holidays are over with and then we won't be able to get to you until january or february so if you can please let us know as soon as possible that'll help you that'll help us that'll help everybody out there time right now is just before noon and i've got to go ahead and curtail this because we've got to get done with the noon show coming up for monday again stay tuned to news 12 on air and online for more details i'm chief meteorologist Austin Onik. You've been watching the very early edition of News 12's Weather Overtime Weather Blog. Stay tuned for meteorologist Todd Highslip today. And again, stay tuned for more details at WDEF.com weather. Thanks for joining us for Weather Overtime on Monday morning.